well, so welcome everyone uh, to our workshop. Um, we'll be presenting on a blended use of online resources. Um, so an integration to the current system of education and health. Um, before we begin, um, I just want to let everyone know that I'll be looking at the chat. If you have any questions, just throw them in there. Um, and on the Whova app as well. Um, and our presentation is going to be about 20 or 30 minutes, leaving us with time to answer any questions. Um, all right, let's get going. Um, before we start, I also just want to say that we have no actual or potential conflicts of interest in relation to this presentation. So my name is Jean, but I'm also joined by Dr. Janet. Um, and so I'd let her introduce herself. Thank you very much, Jean. And hello, everybody from Germany. Um, first, I want to say that I'm very happy to be here at this conference. And I'm very happy that uh, you are here and that you are interested in our presentation. I'm going to introduce myself quickly. Um, my name is Janet Röhrig. I'm a psychotherapist and have been working in the clinical and research field of addiction since 2008. Um, since six years, I'm uh, at the Klinikum Stuttgart. This is a big hospital in Germany, and my research interests are on addiction, healthcare, um, e-mental health, and use. So um, first I have to apologize because I have some trouble with my voice uh, due to COVID-19, but um, I do my best in, in the worst case, uh, Jean has to help me out. <laughs> so, I'm happy, um, happy to, yeah, happy to. <laughs> thank you so much. And now uh, Jean, it's your turn <laughs> to introduce yeah, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I see that in the chat there are a lot of people from, from Canada. Um, I'm, I'm also Canadian. Uh, I did my bachelor's at McGill, my master's at the University of British Columbia, and I'm currently working as a clinical research associate um, with Janet at the addiction clinic in Germany. And so my focus is really on addiction and concurrent disorders, and particularly among um, youth, adolescents, and, and young adults. So for the overview of today's presentation, uh, I'm just going to start talking about youth and substance use, particularly as it relates to Germany. Then we'll talk about uh, climate schools, which were uh, first initially made in Australia. And then we're going to talk about something else called MOFA, which is what we're developing in Germany, and over what our study is, blending both of those two things together, and then open the floor to discussion. Um, and I'll pass it over to Janet so that she can start us off. Thank you. Okay, um, on the next slide, we will give you a brief overview of substance use among adolescents. Um, first, we can say that adolescence is the peak time for initiation of substance use. Adolescence is also a period marked by key biopsychosocial transitions and milestones. And substance use can therefore disrupt cognitive and emotional development, leading to a range of adverse health and social outcomes depending on social context, for example, available substances, and personal characteristics. Potential harms include, but are not limited to, um, road traffic accidents and other unintentional injuries, fatal or non-fatal um, overdose, violence, intentional self-harm and suicide, infectious diseases, um, cognitive impairment, substance dependence, and so on. So use substance use therefore poses a significant risk to public health and is becoming an increasing global health priority, albeit slowly. Okay, on the next um, slide, um, we have some data from the uh, German so-called um, drug affinity study. Um, the lifetime prevalence of alcohol consumption among adolescents aged 12 to 17 years is currently about um, 63%. This means, on the other side, that about 37% of young people have never drunk alcohol before. Compared to that, um, nearly 95% of young adults age, aged um, 18 to 25 have already consumed alcohol. So the good news uh, in Germany is that 
regular alcohol consumption by young people has been declining um, uh, since the last years, uh, since I think the 1970s. But the seven day prevalence of binge drinking among um, uh, adolescents um, is about 16% for boys and about 11% for girls. And that has been relatively constant for several years. Among the illicit drugs, cannabis is the most consumed substance. In Germany, young people have almost no experience with other illegal drugs. Um, that means in addition to cannabis, inhalants, um, crystal meth or heroin and crack play a minor role. So we are in the lucky position now at the moment that we don't have uh, any overdose crisis like uh, in North America or in other states. And we hope that this will not change <laughs> in the future. <clears throat> so um, the lifetime prevalence of cannabis use is about 10% compared to ecstasy with point, um, 0 0.6 and amphetamines with 0 0.5. Um, the proportion of young people who have used cannabis at least once in their lives has increased since uh, 2011. Again, adolescence is a critical period for the onset of addiction and comorbid psychological disorders. Although substance use disorders are the most prevalent psychiatric condition and are leading cause for hospitalization in the young population, young people with substance use disorders can be considered an underserved population. That means or therefore um, prevention and early intervention play an important role, as you can imagine. So, um, here you can see the internal evaluation um, of the counseling center of our clinic in Germany. Um, in Stuttgart or in uh, Germany, there, are, there exist a lot of addiction counseling centers. Um, therefore, this should only be an example, but I think it's very repre representative um, for the current situation. So here the diagram shows that the proportion of especially adolescents and young adults is very small compared uh, to other age groups. Okay. This um, brings us to the main question, how can we reach this target group? More broadly, targeting children and young people with health literacy interventions Psycho, uh, psychoeducation and risk management can promote healthy behaviors and improve future health risk, while also helping youth find a point of entry um, into complicated adult uh, oriented um, community support systems. The problem is that existing programs um, do not su sufficiently address the complex and multi facetted needs of young people as they are mainly developed for adults, nor do they cater to the preferences of uh, youth. Existing um, evidence-based programs that educate and equip um, youth with appropriate knowledge and skills in order to reduce and um, Re uh, reduce use and uh, harms associated with use have mostly been developed, evaluated and implement implemented in North America and Australia, but not in Europe. Therefore, a large gap um, exists in many European countries like uh, Germany um, regarding online substance use uh, and mental health prevention programs in an online um, way. So um, we really have to do a lot uh, to improve uh, this situation. Okay, and <laughs> I think it's important to point out that even in Germany, um, almost all adoles adolescents uh, have access to the internet and use it on a daily basis.
And furthermore, about 90% of the 10 to 15 year olds use messaging services such as WhatsApp, Telegram, Viper, etc. And 61% uh, um, were active on social networks in 2020. Therefore, web based and online programs for youth have a lot of capacity and represent extremely untapped resources. Um, at the end of this um, theor theoretical um, background, um, one can summarize that schools um, especially can be and are the ideal place to offer appropriate opportunities for the target group. In this way, they are accessible to almost all young people, enabling them to participate, engage um, with services with minimal disruption. This also uh, been this has also been uh, confirmed in several and many literature reviews and meta-analytic studies, and it is recommended that the offers should be highly interactive, skills focused and implemented over multiple years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna discuss uh, the, uh, the rest of the slides. Uh, and so a good example of, of school, pl school based platforms for education um, regarding substance use it includes uh, what is called climate schools. And this has been implemented um, in Australia. And it's a student and teacher led curriculum based uh, program aimed at preventing, pre preventing harms related to substance use. Um, and so this is a modular internet based intervention program really aimed at students in grades eight to 10. And it's spread across five different courses. So there's alcohol education and alcohol and cannabis education. And those are for the younger students. So years eight years eight or nine and then in year 10 students are provided with a psychostimulant and cannabis education course an ecstasy and emerging drug course and then a mental health course um and so these are the the um the front pages of what these courses look like so this is the these are the two that would be for the first for the earlier students so years eight and year nine and then these ones would be the uh, for the older students. So psychosemans and cannabis, ecstasy and emerging drugs and, and mental health outcomes. And so uh, mental health. And so these would all be for year 10 students um, after they've done the other other modules. And so uh, what kind of results have come out of this uh, this climate school project in Australia? Um, well, uh, climate schools is quite evidence based. The uh, final results of a cluster randomized control trial um, students receiving the alcohol module and the alcohol and cannabis module with the mental health module um, were compared to the control group um, who were not receiving those modules. And in this control trial, which included over uh, 6,000 students in high school from over 71 or from 71 schools um, across three different states in Australia, they found that a combination of substance use and mental health um, education significantly increased young people's perception and knowledge about substance use and mental health. Um, it uh, increased, um, it decreased their odds of drinking and heavy drinking, slowed down their trajectory of anxiety. Um, and this was all compared to um, the control condition for up to 30 months following the intervention. The only other issue is um, accessing help. So this is all fine and this is fantastic because it really educates youth about it. Um, but in, um, in, in Germany, what we thought was that there was missing a step between uh, providing the education and providing youth with services to access help. So along with programs focusing on prevention and psychoeducation, schools are also really well positioned in our perspective to support effective and accessible delivery of substance use and mental health services. Um, currently, most youth access healthcare through their families, um, their existing healthcare providers, um, their family physicians, but this is a barrier for a lot of youth because they might be reluctant to involve their parents or to consult their family physicians with concerns relating, relating to substance use, maybe emotional problems and, and reproductive concerns as well. 
And so to that effect, um, school-based or community-based programs that provide youth with knowledge and resources for access to healthcare services can help lower those barriers for youth. Um, and I think uh, an interesting study that was done in the US um, involving 12 American high schools really showed this, this time for sexual um, and reproductive health care. So the, um, in this study, they, with over 30,000 students, they really provided community-based providers with high quality sexual and reproductive health care services that they could then provide to the adolescents to connect them to care. And so their findings were that among female students, receipt of birth control in the past year was greater, increase in sexually transmitted disease testing was greater, um, and treatment for sexually transmitted diseases was greater, and increase in ever receiving an HIV test um, was greater in those who received the um, references and the connection to sexual and reproductive health care services. So offering an effective means of connecting students to these services really improved the receipt of these services. And with that in mind, um, in Germany, we thought that an online substance use program could similarly offer youth with a point of entry into the healthcare system and addiction service support system. And so with that reasoning, um, the online-based program called MOFA, I, I won't say it in German, but in, uh, in English, uh, it's uh, the mobile online portal for questions about addiction. Um, it was the acronym that we came up with. And so the point of this program is to put youth in contact with professionals and accessible youth addiction counseling centers within the city of Stuttgart where we're based in. And so this could directly benefit youth who may be looking for advice, uh, peer support, treatment, but are not really sure where they can even start accessing those services and getting that kind of information. And so that kind of brings us to the end of the introduction where we spoke about climate schools and we spoke about MOFA. And that brings us to the project that we're and the study that we'll be doing in Germany. Um, and that is a blend of the climate schools and of MOFA. Um, so to our knowledge, this, there has been no intervention which has evaluated the combination of school-based curriculum-based prevention-focused programs like climate school. Um, with online portals that provide accessible point of entries into regional support systems like MOFA. Um, so before going forward, I just want to uh, see if there are any questions regarding what we've gone over. Um, I may, maybe I'll give like a minute uh, for people to type them if they have any questions regarding anything we've spoken about. If not, I'll keep going um, to go over the study that we'll be doing. Uh, I'll just give three minutes, one, one minute to uh, kind of see if there are any questions. If not, I'll just keep going. Uh, I'll just keep going at this point. And then if someone else has any questions, they can just uh, throw it in the chat as well. So what, what was the study that we want to, what is the study that we're currently doing in, in Germany? Um, so as I said, we're, we're blending climate schools with MOFA. Um, and so what climate schools is, is an evidence-based educational online prevention program. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the climate schools that was developed in Australia, translate it to German, adapt it to the German school system, uh, and then only include the alcohol and the alcohol and cannabis module. So the, the, the modules that were only based for the younger students, we're going to start with that one and then see how that goes. And, and hopefully if it goes well, we can add the other modules eventually as well. But so we're going to take the climate schools from the model, um, translate and adapt it to German, and then uh, um, to students here in Germany. The other thing we're going to do is combine that with MOFA, the portal for early intervention. And so that is going to be developed by our team in Germany, and that's going to be used to complement the climate schools that we're going to be um, implementing. And so what are we looking to uh, find out about this? So ultimately, um, the study aims to adapt and implement climate schools um, in combination with MOFA to German, the German high school system and to evaluate the effectiveness of school-based addiction prevention programs with online access to regional addiction support system. Uh, so that's, again, combining two different things, combining the um, educational 
of climate schools with the connection to the addiction support system of MOFA. And so we're going to evaluate this with four different sub-studies. The first sub-study is going to be on the effectiveness of the intervention, quite simply. So this is going to be a randomized controlled trial in a step wedge design. Uh, so similar to what the climate school study did. Um, we already have four participating schools, and the goal is to include um, and analyze data from 130 students between the ages of 14 uh, to 16 and in grades 9 to 10. Um, and then we're going to be collecting data at five different time points over the one year that students will be participating in this study. And so this is the uh, this is what the project will look like. So this might be a little bit confusing at first, but we'll have two different clusters. And so if a student is to the control group one, for instance, they will be, um, they'll start the study uh, December. So they might have already studied the, started the study. And then um, five different data collection time points right here on the bottom. Uh, so they will be, we will be collecting data at five different time points. And the last one will be done a year after they started. And so that would be in six different groups. And three of those groups will be receiving the intervention. So we'll be receiving climate schools and MOFA. And the control group won't be receiving any of those. We'll just be receiving the normal um, substance use education that is provided in the German school system. And so what kind of data are we kind of looking for? Um, this is what we will be collecting, what data we'll be collecting. So we'll use all the same instruments that were used in the Australian project but obviously translated to German. And these questionnaires will evaluate knowledge about alcohol and cannabis. Um, it will measure patterns of use and attitudes towards substance use. Um, we'll also be looking at the quality of life with the EQ5D um, and the uh, evaluation scale that was designed by the Climate School Project, the SCSE um, down here. Um, and so these will be given at the appropriate time points um, following the structure that was provided by the climate schools. And what do we expect? Well, um, similar to climate schools, we expect to find that those receiving the intervention, so those receiving climate schools and MOFA in Germany, will um, in have increased their substance-related knowledge. We also expect the intervention group to have lower substance use. Uh, we expect them to have lower positive expectations of substance use. Um, we expect them to have a reduced intention to use substances, um, have more positive attitudes towards um, substances and quality of life increased and distress decreased. So those are uh, first study what we're expecting to see. Whoa. Um, and that's just for sub study one. Sub study two is going to be complementary, complementary to sub study one. Um, and this is going to be a sub-study two, which will be a focus group with students and their uh, caregivers, their guardians. And so what we want to do with this study is uh, to collect, uh, collect the view of the students and their parents on the interventions that will be provided. Um, so we want to gain insight onto what they thought could be um, could be improved in the next iterations of climate schools. And so the focus groups will take place after the completion of each intervention. And what the results of these focus groups will be used in later adaptations um, to be able to benefit groups of future students. And so these are gonna be semi-structured, semi-standard interview guides um, that will be covering, for example, satisfaction with the online concept, satisfaction with the content, um, et cetera. The subsidy three, so I mentioned that there are four, so this is the third one. Subsidy three will be describing the um, access to both teachers and peer advisors. So throughout this study, we're gonna be um, training teachers and peer advisors to provide appropriate um, resources and care to the students that are in this intervention to be able to direct the climate schools um, because the climate school, some of those interventions will be done in the classroom. And so the teachers must be able to know um, how to do that. And so the uh, point of this sub study one will be to ask 
the teachers and the peer advisors who have been trained um, about specific knowledge regarding intervention and their satisfaction with the training program. So how do they think we could improve in helping them become more knowledgeable about climate schools and being more knowledgeable about providing the appropriate resources to youth who are in their classrooms who are asking questions about substance use. And similar to study one and two, study three and four are complementary. So study four is again gonna be a focus group, this time with the teachers and the peer advisors, the peer counselors. And so again, this will be to gather the collective view of teachers and trained peer advisors um, on the intervention, gain more insight into possible further adjustments to the training concept. And so um, these again will be used to better the training uh, in the future iterations of climate schools for teachers and peer advisors that will be coming later. And so with that, that's an overview of the entire study uh, from sub study one all the way to sub study four. Uh, this is the clinical team that we have in Stuttgart. Um, so this is uh, the overall project responsibility falls on the shoulders of uh, Dr. Maurice Cabanis um, and of Jeanette. Um, who's with us today. And then there's also Vanessa, who's coordination for integration. Um, Lorenz Suter, who is our methods responsible. We also have Franci and Antonio and Antonia and, and myself as the researchers and Franci, who's been doing all the coordinating for us so far. Um, in my final slide, I just wanna uh, make a special shout out to uh, the climate schools in Australia. So they've been super helpful with us to design our study and they've been really, really kind and generous in um, going over a protocol and helping us best design a study. Um, so I want to make a special thanks to them. Um, so their team is led by Professor Mary Thiessen and Professor Nicola Newton. And so they've received over, I mean, they've, they've done wonderful stuff. They've received over 20 awards for the development, evaluation and dissemination of those, their courses. And if you want to look it up, Climate Schools Australia, um, they've actually just recently changed their name to Our Futures. Um, so if you do look it up, I, I recommend it. Take a look at what they're suggesting. I think it's really, really cool. Um, and we hope to, to have the same thing going on in, in Germany here with the students. And so one more thing uh, is that our study was funded, um, supported by the uh, Provincial Foundation for Health Prevention with funds from the statutory health insurance system in Baden-Württemberg, which is the, um, the province that Stuttgart is in right now in Germany. So with that all said and done, um, I, was, I would like to open the floor to discussion. Um, so if you guys have any questions, Mara in the chat, I'll also take down the uh, presentation so that we can maybe discuss in person, have a better free flowing conversation. Um, and I encourage anyone to maybe um, unmute themselves if they have questions. Uh, they're also totally okay to, to open their videos so that we can kind of make it feel less of a Zoom meeting and more of an in-person chat. So thank you everyone for, um, for your attention. And so if you have any questions, please be free to um, ask us and I'll, I'll uh, be quiet now for a little bit. Um, yeah, there's already a question on the uh, Whova platform and Jenna, maybe you can help answer this. Um, the question is what kind of training do the teachers receive? Um, so I don't know if you, have, if you can kind of help with that. Yes, sure. Thank you, Jean, <laughs> for your presentation. Um, <laughs> uh, the training of the um, uh, teachers um, is, uh, I think, a very short training because um, the teachers said that um, they don't have much time to prepare and they need a short and a dirty um, um, uh, education and training. So I think we will do it um, online in an online way and the teachers um, will get information about the background uh, background um, of addiction some uh, prevalence data and so on and then to every module they will get um, information about the activities or um, documents they can use um, in the class uh, it's important to know that um, these uh, modules um, have two sides. One, um, as you mentioned, um, comic, which is done um, 
online by uh, the students. And these um, uh, personal um, activities in class and therefore the teachers need um, trainings. Yes, so we will um, yeah. answer questions and um, explain to them these materials. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, um, so the, stu the students have uh, a part of their module, they have work to do at home and, and self learning. And then some of it is also going to be done in the classroom. So um, what the teachers are, what kind of training the teachers are going to receive, a lot of it is going to be a part of the introduction that we provided uh, as to what the background is on addiction, like, like Janet mentioned. And then regarding a specific modules that will be provided to their students, they'll have uh, education regarding uh, some common questions that students might have, go over the module and, and have them ask us any questions that we can provide to them um, so that they can really be well equipped to answer questions of their, their students. And I think we're also going to provide them with um, contact information. If, if you do have questions that they weren't sure how to answer, um, they can obviously reach out to us um, in, that, in that sense. I hope that answered um, that question. Um, so we had another question in the chat. So was there a screening process for the youth eligibility to participate in the climate program um, so concerning high risk, et cetera? And if there was a eligibility to participate, I know that in ours, do we have an eligibility criteria for participants? Oh, Jenna. Excuse me, I have some problems with the <laughs> technique. <laughs> oh, your Wi-Fi. Um, um, maybe it was my, I didn't my Wi-Fi is not very good. But, the um, question, and I can't see the question. Can you um, please repeat it? In the, in the, in yeah, yeah, yeah I'll read it. Yeah. Um, was there a screening process for youth um, in terms of eligibility to participate in the study in climate schools? Is it screening? Yeah, like no. um, so. I don't think there was. I think that. Um, if youth provided consent to participate, um, they were uh, uh, eligible to participate. Um, so they just had to be in the specific grades. I think that in terms of uh, high risk, uh, Jeanette, can you remind me, uh, did the parents have to inform for the students? Yes, yes, yeah. um, this is the point. Um, and this is, um, I think, as in other countries, very important uh, in Germany too, um, yeah. both, parents um, had to um, say, yes, my uh, son, my daughter um, uh, can um, take part at this uh, study. Yeah. So this is one of the uh, most important points. And then sure, um, uh, the um, pupils in this um, pilot study uh, need, um, how can I say this, good eyes. They um, have to they have to use the um, digital um, material yeah. this was one point but um, this is not uh, that big and um, I think uh, there That's were it. not many exclusion criteria yeah because yeah, we wanted I, to um, bring all the uh, pupils into this uh, study yeah and I think that uh, Robin you um, it's a very good question you bring up because you know what if what if students have a, a high risk or have a history of trauma? We don't necessarily want to re-traumatize them or we don't want to um, um, push push them towards something that they might want not want to do. So that's I think really important to say is that the parents consented um, and the students did as well. Um, so we would hope that any student with a history um, would not necessarily want to enroll in this study um, and we might not recommend enrolling in this study um, if it were to um, cause uh, more trauma to the student. Uh, and so in, in, with that respect, there was no strict eligibility criteria with regards to um, if the patient, if the student had ever um, experienced any trauma or had any other high risk um, uh, substance use before. Um, but we did make sure that all students uh, had their parents provide consent and agree to participate in the study and had the proper means of um, working online and, and uh, taking the climate schools online as well. So those were the, the two eligibility criteria. So pretty, pretty open in terms of participation. And I hope that um, helped answer the question. Yeah, and since the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, it's uh, easier um, for the students and pupils to take part in these online um, 
interventions because now all um, pupils have access to um, specific um, online resources. So um, yes, sure, they needed an um, email address and so on, but this was not a really um, exclusion criteria because um, all the or, or many lessons are um, done in the virtual world. So um, yeah, this is not a problem for um, the pupils at the moment. Yeah, um, there was a, a comment in the on the Hoover chat. Um, I don't know if I can share the slides and yeah, I, I absolutely uh, can. So I'll be able to maybe send that to the conference organizing committee and to see how they can um, upload those. I think that those would be helpful. And I did upload a document to the Whova um, platform, which is uh, a publication from the climate schools. So if anyone has any um, more interest in reading up on that, feel free to go check that out. I would really recommend that you go on the website and take a look at that. Um, they've done some really amazing stuff in, in Australia. And so I think it's a good model to have for other countries. So I see another question um, about the um, age of the peer counselors. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you see. It. <laughs> I, I don't see it. I don't, see it. I don't know what I oh, yeah, see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You talk a little bit more about um, Yes, yeah. I just wanted to um, mention that um, the peer counselors or the peers, um, they are the same age as uh, the other students. We wanted that um, uh, that these uh, counselors or peers um, are as close to the students as possible. So um, for sure, they are not responsible for them. This is clear and uh, 14 or 15 year old st uh, students can't be responsible for anything we do in this project, but um, they are trained in um, uh, contacting um, professionals. So they will have the information or further information about if a friend of mine or if a friend or a pupil in my class has a problem and doesn't know what to do, I can give him advices or her um, information about um, the process to get in contact with the counseling service or with the yeah. um, persons who work in the MOFA project. Yeah, I think that with the peer counselors, um, the point was really to make, uh, to have peers that were much closer to the students. So we have these teachers, but if, if students were nervous to, to bring something up with the teacher, they might feel more comfortable bringing it up with one of their friends or the so-called uh, peer counselor. And so these peer counselor um, have been trained similarly to the teachers to a lesser extent, given their, their age, um, but their age, the question is regarding their age range and it's meant to be super close with the students um, to really be able to lessen the barrier um, between the two. Um, Janet, there's another question that is asking, um, can you talk a little bit more about MOFA and how adolescents can access even counseling professionals? So is it immediate access? Is it through messaging, the online? How, how, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good uh, question. Thank you. Um, um, the MOFA project um, will uh, uh, have a, a chat function and uh, email function. So if um, students recognize or know why they are doing this climate school project, uh, oh, maybe I need more information or um, oh, maybe I have a problem. So they can um, get in contact in an anonymous uh, way with uh, um, professionals of the counseling service, they can write um, an email or uh, use a chat function. And um, yes, this is the way the contact takes place. Yeah, yeah. So we just want to minimize the barriers as easy for them as possible to yeah. reach professionals. Um, there's another question um, by Hans Henderson um, asking, uh, so private deliverers of online treatment, um, such as 
company, uh, such as his company, our companies, uh, homebaserecovery.ca are often asked to provide research or evidence of effectiveness. Um, so how would a private enterprise partner with a research agency? Um, so in the experience of Molf Climate Schools, has there been any partnership with private enterprises? Have any private enterprises reached out to you, Janet, or how does that work? Is, is that happen in Germany? Um, no, we, um, one second. <laughs> Enterprise. Oh, company, company. Ah, company. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at the moment we are not, uh, in touch with any, um, private enterprise, um, of online. No, um, At the moment, um, we don't have any contact with uh, these uh, private companies. Mm -hmm. um, would it is that something that is that it might happen? Like, say, the Mofine Climate Schools are quite effective, and so we um, would want to expand that. Uh, would the German school system take that over? Or how could that work? Would a private company um, handle that? What, what would be something that would be done in Germany or you can mm -hmm. envision? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the aim is that, um, yes, if this uh, first study or pilot study is successful and we get uh, good uh, and um, uh, optimistic data, um, yes, sure, we want that um, uh, all students um, in Germany uh, uh, can use this um, project or um, intervention uh, program for free. So um, there aren't any plans in which way we do uh, this, but um, I don't think that we uh, need to um, go in contact with uh, private um, enterprise partners because um, we are in touch with the Australian um, uh, team and uh, they are very interested in um, bringing it to Europe. So, um, yeah, I think this is an, um, a, a closed uh, system. So, but mm -hmm. um, everything is possible. <laughs> we can think about it. But um, yeah. I think because uh, Climate Schools is from Australia and they um, did this uh, many years ago, um, they decide what. Um, will be the next steps with uh, climate schools? I, yeah, I think that um, it's a really good question, uh, Hans, because um, the, the objective for climate schools is for it to become part of the curriculum for the students. And so it be taught like um, any other subject that the students are taught in school. Um, I think that where a private company could partner with a research agency um, might be when we're trying to reach youth that aren't necessarily in school. So maybe young adults who are not in university um, or adolescents who are not in university. Um, if so, so you know, our, our climate schools in MOFA doesn't address um, the needs of youth who are not in school. And so I think that in that perspective, it would be interesting for a private enterprise to collaborate with a research agency because um, the private enterprise could help fund um, the research agency, which could then collect data, um, and, and it would be a um, synergistic relationship in that sense. Um, so I think that there's a lot of youth um, who could benefit from that, even individuals who are not in school, um, and that would possibly be something to look forward to. I think that here with Climate Schools and MOFI, it's meant to be smoothly integrated into the curriculum. Um, so I'm not sure how private companies could fit into that because that would be not then taken over by the school system. Uh, so yeah, lots of opportunities, as Janet said, there's um, anything can happen really. So, um, so yeah, but I appreciate the question. Oh, thank you. Are. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I hope I answered it uh, adequately. Yep, definitely. Awesome. So if anyone has any other questions, um, if they want to um, 
write them down or, or post them on the Whova platform, we'd be happy to address them. Um, if there aren't any, um, I had a couple of, well, Jenna and I had a couple of questions for the participants to see if uh, you had any feedback or input for us, um, because we, we would also, you know, this is in the development process, so it'd be a learning opportunity. Um, and so I think that generally we're just wondering um, if you think with, with, with the youth that you interact with, um, and the, the youth that you work with, if this is something that uh, they would like to be engaged in, if this is a perspective that they would be want to be involved in in school, and maybe how would you see it um, engaging students further? I think that would be a good question to ask. If, if anyone in the audience um, has any input on that or, or want to share their experience in working with youth um, in terms of online solution, would be happy to hear about other people's experiences as well. Yes, I think we will get a lot of data from the uh, focus groups. So I think this um, evaluation will be very interesting uh, for us. And um, yes, I <laughs> look very forward to um, a bigger study we plan after this pilot study because um, the German school system is so <laughs> complicated and um, uh, crazy. We have so many different uh, school types and um, yes, I think um, yeah, when we get this uh, data um, and uh, yeah, which is optimistic and we can do a bigger um, uh, study in Germany, all these questions you mentioned, Jean, um, will be um, Back again. <laughs> yeah, address. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, address, yeah. I, yeah, it's true, exactly. Um, but I think it's super interesting, and I'm really looking forward to um, finishing. Um, maybe uh, right before we leave, if we can provide an update as to where we are in the project, Janet. If you can maybe just say where we are, what are the next steps that are coming along, um, so we can leave mm -hmm. people with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we started our project in um, October um, with the control group. So um, uh, all the four uh, schools um, got uh, the questionnaires and um, they will uh, answer the questions uh, to the different um, time points. Um, we are preparing the um, trainings for the um, teachers at the moment. We um, initiated an advisory board where um, we can talk or discuss all uh, the open points and um, questions. And yes, I think in March we will uh, start with the first intervention group. So. We are very excited at the moment. We are um, also translating all these comics um, from English to uh, German. Yes, uh, it's it's a uh, um, uh, stressful but <laughs> very interesting time for us. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So we started recruiting for the control group in. October, and then we're still just uh, gathering data from that group. And then in the meantime, um, because it's a step wedge design, so we have a control group. And then in March, we're going to start with the intervention. So between now, end of January to March, we're just translating the intervention from the Australian climate schools, making sure that the teachers are trained and ready to answer um, questions that the students might have. And then come March, we'll start with the first um, with the first intervention group. So yeah, exciting stuff. 
um, that we're doing here in Germany. Uh, and I just want to, you know, take a, a last last minute of this to thank everyone for. Um, it was really, really fun. And I hope you guys have a really good rest of the conference. Uh, I know that the days of conferences are quite heavy and the, the, the next lightning talks are in exactly eight minutes. So I think end it here, give you guys uh, five minutes to uh, have or get some water or coffee um, before the next thing. So I just want to wrap it up everything here. Uh, maybe Shannon, if you have any final words before we leave, but uh, if not. Yes, um, I wish you a wonderful conference. In Germany, we go now in a few hours to bed. <laughs> so, but uh, I will join the conference.